All right, so welcome to our first online lesson. So um, we're gonna to try to make this as much like the classroom experience as possible. Um, so there are gonna be times where I direct you to work independently, um, maybe pause the video, work a problem, um, unpause the video, see the results, check your results. Um, there'll be somewhere we kind of work together. Um, so it'll be a little bit like that classroom environment just without the ability to, to, to ask a question right away. Um, but if you do have questions, remember, um, we'll be having some office hours on the website. You can always email. Um, so there will be times for you to ask those questions. So what you might want to do is if at any point in time you get stuck, um, just take out um, and write down a question, have those available that way. Then later when you contact us, um, you can have those questions ready and you, so you don't forget. Um, the other thing is that we want you to participate just like you were in class. So if you have the opportunity to print the lesson, print the lesson. Um, if you don't, no worries. Just grab some type of paper, line paper, blank paper, write the problems down, uh, and just interact with us in the same kind of way, uh, except for you may have to kind of pause the video, write things down, start the video. And remember, that's the nice thing about this is that if you need to, you can always pause the video, you can always stop, get caught up, and then start again. So that's kind of the little intro there uh, for our first lesson. So what I would like you to do now um, is that you have three warm-up problems at the top there that say simplify. So I would like you to simplify those three expressions. So go ahead and pause the video, uh, attempt those three problems, and then turn it back on. Let's see how you did. All right, so hopefully um, you have um, worked all three of these. And so now let's go through these together. Um, so I'm going to select my pen up here, maybe. Here we go. All right, um, let's start here. All right, and now really what we were doing when we simplify these expressions are looking for like terms. So when I look at this, this has an x, this has an x. So we have 10 x's plus 12 x's, which would give us 22 x's. Uh, let me go ahead and change that. That way it'll be a little, little less thick. Now notice when we get to the second um, warm-up problem here, we still have two x's here. So we still want to think about these two things as like terms. All right, um, and so what we're gonna do now is think about combining just negative two x and this positive nine x, and that would give us seven x. And then here at the end, we have just this regular number, all right, and there's nothing else to combine it with, so we just take this positive six and we just bring it down. All right, now if you look at the third um, problem we have over here, uh, let me get rid of some of these random kind of marks here um, from earlier when I was practicing with my pens to make sure that I could, could write for you guys. Um, so now we see, now not only do we have an x, we have an x squared. And here we have 3x squared. Now remember, like terms is any variable to the same power. So we only want x squared to go with x squared, so x's to go with x's, x to the fifth power is going to the x, x to the fifth power. So when we look at this problem, we have this x squared term, and I'm not sure why my pen keeps wanting to change back to, <laughs> to that different thickness there, um, and our 3x squared here. Now remember, this is 1x squared plus 3x squared, and that would give us 4x, maybe, 4x squared. Now we move to the next power of x, which is this 4x and this positive 7x, and these really want to be thick for some reason. All right, and so when we do 4 plus 7, we get to 11x. And then once again, you see that we have this uh, number at the end, all right, just hanging out here by itself, all right, and there's nothing to combine it with, so we just want to bring that positive one down and write it right there. And really all this is, is combining like terms, which is really the point of our lesson today. So when you look down here at these examples, we're really doing what we did up here, but we're adding them. So if you look at example um, 1a here, or subtracting them, which is what we're doing in um, 1b. And the reality is all we want to do is combine like terms. That's it. Now what I'm gonna do to help this is um, as I do these problems, what I'm going to do is do kind of a vertical format to where I'm going to take all of our like terms, I'm going, to, I'm going to arrange them vertically to make it easy to see and then to combine. So for example here, we have this quadratic and we want to add it with this quadratic. And you can see I have multiple like terms. And I'm just going to work left to right here. So when I look, I have this 5x squared here. I'm going to label it here. I have a minus 3x. So that's a different term, all right, and so what I'm going to do here for this term is start a new row. Let me make sure my pen, 
um, is back here. And so I'm going to write minus 3x, and the thickness has changed again. All right, so let's go back and do that. All right. And then now notice you have another 7x. That's like this term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it, maybe, all of a sudden everything's getting really slow here. So let me just start over on the things here. My system is bogging down. Wow, holy cow. All right, so now it's erasing on its own. Come back to me. All right, let's try this a little bit here, a little bit there. All right, so let's try this all over again. And for some reason, the software just wants to really um, change on me here. All right, so I'm going to try this again. So minus 3x, and then we're going to line that other x term right below it like this. So I'm just going to line up all my like terms vertically. Now, when I move here, notice I'm adding 9x squared. So I'm just going to put that 9x squared right here in this column. I have another 2x squared, so I'm going to put that in this column as well. And then I have this one 7x here, so I'm going to put that in this column. So all I'm doing is trying to organize my like terms vertically so I can see them all. So 5 plus 9 plus 2, all right, that would be 16x squared. And then when I look at this, I have negative 3 plus 7, which is 4, and then 4 plus 7x would be 11x. All right. So you can see kind of how this works. Now, once again, what we, we want to do is just look at those like terms and arrange them vertically just so we have a good way of seeing them. All right, now when I look at the next one, all right, I start with a y cubed here. So I'm going to have a y cubed right here. I'm going to start my first column. Now I have now I have a y squared and it's a negative 4y squared, so I'm gonna start a different column for that. I'm gonna put those right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now notice my next term is just a constant. There's no y. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space. Alright, just as that way. Alright, if I do end up having any y terms, I can put them in another column here. Now notice instead of adding, I am now subtracting. So now when I subtract a positive number, it really becomes a negative. So I'm subtracting the 6y cubed. So I'm going to line that up right here, but it's going to become a negative 6y cubed. And now notice I'm subtracting a positive 4. When I subtract a positive 4, that becomes a minus 4. And then when I subtract a negative 6y squared, that becomes a positive 6y squared. And notice now I have everything lined up, and I know everything in this column is a like term. And once again, remember that's a 1 here. So I would do 1y cubed minus 6y cubed, and that would be negative 5y cubed. And then I add these two. So negative 4y squared plus 6y squared is a positive 2y squared. And then here, notice there's no y terms, and then I just have negative 2 and a negative 4, which is a negative 6. And we have added um, two polynomials here, and now we have subtracted those two polynomials there. So here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to pause the video at this moment, and I would like you to attempt problem C here. All right, so give that a go. All right, so pause the video, attempt C, and then I am going to um, work it right here. Okay, so now let's go through this problem. Now, once again, I'm going to line up my like terms here in the column. So nine, negative 9r cubed. And then I have a positive 2r and then a minus 1. All right. Now, once again, notice we're subtracting. So when I subtract a positive 5r squared, notice there's not any like terms here. So that's why I left that gap. That way, if it comes up, I have a little spot to add it here. And it's a negative 5r squared. I subtract r, that's a negative r, and then I subtract 8, and that's a minus 8 right here. And then now all we have to do is combine those like terms. And notice, if I just have one singular like term, I can just bring it down. Okay, and so I can just bring those two guys down like that, and I apologize, my system is dragging a bit here. And then plus 1r and then minus 9. Alright, so there is that one. Alright, 
Now I would like you to attempt problem D. All right, notice there's an addition and then a subtraction here. So go ahead and pause the video, attempt this one, and we'll see how you do. All right, so now it doesn't really matter how many polynomials or what we're doing because we're going to just group everything anyhow. All right, so it just means we may have more rows of things as we group. But I'm going to go ahead and take the first one here. So 2x to the fourth. And notice I don't have an x cubed, I don't have an x squared, so I'm going to keep those blank there. But I have this minus 3x here, and then I have a plus 8. Now notice I'm adding these terms, so I'm going to add 3x to the fourth, so that I'm just going to add that one here. I'm adding negative 2, so that one would go here. And then I'm adding a positive 8, so that would go here. And now I'm subtracting these two things. So subtracting an x cubed. Notice there's no x cubed up here, so I'm just going to add that in the column right here. And then I'm subtracting 1, which becomes a minus 1 here. And so notice now, once again, everything is nice and aligned, hopefully on your paper better than mine. All right. Um, and then this, I add the 2x to the fourth term. That would give me 5x to the fourth. I have this 1x cubed term, so I can bring that 1x cubed term down. All right, so let me try to write that one again. And once again, my system is dragging on me, so I don't think my tablet is responding as well as I would like. Oops, I forgot to adjust the thickness again. All right. So x cubed there. No x squared, so we move on. Negative 3x plus 8x is a positive 5x. And then 8 minus 2 minus 1 would be a positive 5. Okay, now, so let's now talk about the next two examples here. And what you see is now we have multiple vari variables in each term. That doesn't change our process. All that means is we have to just pay a little bit better attention to the exponents. So what this means is if I have an m squared n squared, that can only be combined with something that has exactly m squared n squared in it. An m to the fourth n squared has to have an m to the fourth n squared. So we're just taking that like term idea and now we're just expanding it to where we have to consider both variables versus just a single variable. So once again, the process isn't going to change. I have 4m squared n squared, so I'm going to start a column for all my m squared m squ n squared, like so. Now I have an n m to the fourth n squared. I'm going to start a new column for that guy, just like this. And then I have just an n, I'm going to start a column just for that guy. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now, and then we just repeat that process. Now I'm adding this, so I have an m to the fourth n squared, so that has to go in this middle column here. And since I'm adding it, it's going to stay positive, so plus 5m to the fourth n squared. And then I have this minus 5 n, so I'm adding negative 5 n, so that's going to be minus 5 n. And I'm adding that 2 m squared n squared, so I have to go all the way back out here to that first row. All right, and then once again, we have everything arranged. Maybe, holy cow. So slow, come back to me. And it's off on its own. All right, who knows? All right, so 6m squared n squared. So remember, these are what we have. So they don't change when we combine them. So if, it's, if we start with m squared n squared, we end with m squared n squared. And then negative 3 plus 5 would be a positive 2m to the fourth n squared. And then we have negative 7 plus negative 5, and so that would be a negative 12n. All right. Now it's your turn to try one like this. So go ahead and try example f. All right. So pause the video, give that a go, and then let's see how you did. All right. So now, once again, I have an xy. So I'm going to start an xy column here. So x, y. I have an x to the fourth column, so I'm going to start that as a new column like that. And then I have an x squared y, so that gets its own column. So plus 8x squared y. All right. 
Now, notice I am subtracting these terms. So when I subtract a positive 6x squared y, that becomes a negative. So that I'm going to make that negative and line it up right here. So negative x squared y. Now when I subtract a negative, that becomes a positive. Now notice this is an x to the fourth y squared. I don't have a column for that, so I'm just going to add one out here to the right. So that becomes a positive 4 x to the fourth y squared. And then I'm subtracting this 7x to the 4th. So that's going to come over here. And once again, since I'm subtracting a positive, that becomes a negative. All right. So, whew. All right. Sorry about the drag on the system this morning. All right. I think everybody's on the Internet at this moment because everybody's at home. Uh, all right. So we have one xy term, so I can just bring that one x y term down and then i can combine these two and that would become negative 14 x to the fourth and then i combine these two guys and that becomes a positive 2 x squared y and then i combine well i don't have to combine here i have just that one x to the fourth y squared term so i can bring that down like so, all right, so that really is adding and subtracting polynomials. All right, so now when you look at the next page, this is really just some extra practice here. So here's what I want you to do. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop speaking in a moment, uh, and this will be the end of the video lesson. And so here's what I want you to do is I want you to spend the next, you know, um, you know, eight to ten minutes, and I want you to work, all right, um, these eight problems on your own. Now, once you have finished this, here's what I want you to do. All right, I want you to go to the Schoology site. I want you to click on Algebra 1, Unit 8, Lesson 1 Notes. There's the fully worked solutions for these. And so what I want you to do is after you've stopped the video, I want you to work these eight problems, and then I want you to go to the website, open the key, and check your work, just like what you would do in class, except for instead of coming up, and checking in with me, you now just have to go to the answer key to check your work. All right, my friends, have fun working. Um, it's good to be back doing math with you. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Let Miss Rapp, if you know, have any questions. Let Mr. Youngren know if you have any questions. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in our Hangouts or Zoom sessions. All right, see you later, my friends.